I was very fortunate yesterday to visit the Titleist Performance Center at Woburn in England. For those who have been there, you'll know what a truly spectacular facility and venue it is. For those that haven't, it really is an absolute privilege and pleasure to visit there. Amongst much of the research we did yesterday, one area was really looking at, for example, when you start placing weights in the club, mainly the idea of kind of back weight and a weight at the top or the butt of the grip, and then weight beneath the mouth of the grip, how that then starts to connect into then and influence the profile of the club, especially in particular how it moves and behaves for impact. So you'll see here on screen, this is the back weight. So this was a 30 gram weight being placed on the butt end, and you'll, have, you'll see here the move will pop up window. This is the forces and accelerations around the center mass of the club. So if we just go to shaft parallel for point of interest, you'll see here we have the X, Y, Z value. So the X is the acceleration in this direction, the Y is the force and acceleration in this direction, and the Z is the force and acceleration in this direction. So we now go straight to impact. It's like to move this player down into impact. We go straight to the impact value, which is defined by here. You'll see here the very notable value is we have an FY value of minus 19.7 newtons, which is in essence is how much force is pushing the center mass towards the ball and away from the golfer. However, if we then display on screen the idea of the low balance weight when the weight is placed beneath the mouth sort of grip, we have the almost the exact same values of shaft power and downswing as shown in the previous example, the idea of back weighting. If we then go to the impact value once again, on this particular player, you'll see here very similar effect values. So the force and acceleration along the target line, very similar FZ values, the force going up the shaft, but a very different amount of FY force. So in essence, when the weight is lower down and beneath the grip, how much more the center mass is then almost moving towards the ball and away from the player. So a very different profile, for example, then how that center mass is moving more towards the ball and away from the player when the weight is lower down beneath the mouth of the grip compared to then the top of the grip. Equally so, if we now display on the screen, you'll see in this movable window, this is the club values in real time. The value of interest really has been shown by the circle on the screen of just over kind of 1,404 degrees per second, which is the closure rate the rate of closure of the club face as it rotates through the down. So as we move this player into down, so now you'll start to see, or certainly, excuse me, if you start to move this player more now as they approach impact, we'll now start to see that peak closure rate happening at impact at around about just over kind of 2,000 degrees per second, 2,061 to be very precise. And that's when the weight is actually at the beneath the mouth of the grip. So the closure rate of that club, the peak closure rate, rate of rotation of that club face as it moves into impact, kind of just over 2,000 degrees per second. However, Displaying on screen now the back weight when the weight is at the butt, the top of the grip, we have almost the identical value, kind of 1,453 degrees per second. Once again, at sharp power and down. So however, when we now start to move this player into impact, I'll now see how there's minimal change in that closure rate, the rate of rotation, that club face, as it moves into and around impact. So really, what can we learn and extract from this? Typically, if you're someone trying to encourage a higher rate of closure, more activity in that closure rate, the club face rotating quicker as it moves through impact, very much based on, for example, ball flights you're trying to achieve or trying to avoid, certain movements you're trying to encourage, equally so trying to avoid, then it may be worthwhile exploring the weight almost lower down and beneath the mouth of the grip compared to when the weight is more at the top of the grip, the idea of back weight, we then start to see a much lower closure rate relative to when the weight is further down and beneath the mouth of the grip. So once again, if you're trying to encourage, for example, less activity, less higher rates of closure in that club face, the club less moving more weight, or to be very precise, the center mass not moving so far away from you through impact, then it may be worthwhile exploring then when the weight is more back weighted towards the top of the grip. And then finally, just now displaying the golfer back in their snap position, you'll see here we have a VSP, the vertical shaft plane, of an essence just under 55 degrees. We then go straight to impact by pressing the I button. You'll see here there's an increase in that VSP now of kind of 64.8 degrees. So in essence, an increase of around kind of 10 degrees from its start position relative to its impact position. However, if we now display on screen for the back weight, so when the weight is more at the top, the butt of the club, you'll see here we go to the impact position. We have a VSP, a vertical shaft plane, have kind of just done the kind of 65 degrees. However, displaying on screen now, and again, is shown by the circle. So you have a VSP when it's more the low balance weight, the weight's further beneath the mouth of the grip of 60 and a half degrees. So again, the VSP reduces when the weight is further beneath the mouth of the grip, the VSP increases when the weight is more towards the button. So once again, what can we learn and extract from this? If you're someone trying to maybe increase with the drive in particular, the VSP to increase, maybe explore putting more weight towards the top of the butt, the idea of back weighting, equally safe, we're trying to bring the VSP downwards, then put the weight almost beneath the mouth of the grip. So really what can we learn from that very light exploration 
yesterday that when we start looking at, say, where you put weights, especially at the grip end of the club, towards the idea of the butt back weight, and what we can see is the center of mass doesn't move so far away from you through impact. The closure at the club face is certainly a lot less, for example, as you approach impact, and the VSB can be increased to be slightly higher relative to, for example, when it's often referred to as a low balance weight, the weight's almost at the base of the mouth of the grip. What we can then start to see is the closure rate increases in terms of that rate of club face rotation. The center mass starts to move more towards the ball through impact and the VSP can then be downward. So certainly using weights in the grip can be a wonderful way of exploring that very playful way, changing profiles in changing behaviors, especially in this case of the driver in and through impact.